You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! We are the Mad Men of Masculinity. Your home for healthy masculinity. We're just real men having real conversations for you. Hey, hey, hey. Bow, bow, bow. Hey, I am Kirk M. Samuels. And I am Jason B. Kendrick. And we are the Mad Men of Masculinity. That's right. We're just real men having real conversations for you. For you. Are we doing, I had to point the camera. I had to point at the camera because people don't like that. Are we doing a movie voices today? Yeah. In a world. In a world. Where real women. Yeah. Love real men. Do they? Uh, well, there's some question about that nowadays. I don't know, man. It seems like masculinity is kind of outdated. It, well, I, mm, mm, it, feel, mm. it, it seems like, I don't know, man. It seems, like, it seems like the only time you hear the word masculinity is after the word toxic. Right, right. Yeah, maybe in modern. What's up with that, man? Modern whatever social norms or I don't know. What do you think? Do women even dig that? I don't I, know, man. I, I, I have been fortunate enough, even though the evidence is to the contrary in much of the social media and in the media, I have in real life run into people. For real? Yeah. Like in real life, IRL? Real ladies. Like IRL, real women who actually really like real men. IRL and real ladies. Do Do they like masculinity? Speaking of... We should talk about that today. Yes, we should. What do you think? I I think we should. We should actually have somebody maybe in studio talking about that today. We should. Yeah, speaking of that, I think we should have a real woman... Who likes real men? IRL. In real life. Boom. Come on the show. Yes. Bing. Bing. Just, uh, just like just that. Just like that. Just like that. It's like, it's like um, I Dream a Genie. There she or, is. She, she was it I Dream a Genie where she did the blink? It's magic. Was it? Or, or no, was it? Or what's the one, what's the one where she did Bewitch? Bewitch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, where she thank did, you, Nikki. Thank you, super producer Nikki Nicole. Bewitch. She did the nose thing. Yeah, Bewitch. And then well, boom, the I Dream a Genie did like the nod thing, right? She yeah. did the nod thing. Can no, you not, that's I not why he brought you yeah. on. That's not why yeah. he brought you on. Totally to do the we just squirrel. Oh, yeah, we it. just squirrel sometimes, man. No, forget she us. did it. I loved it. She did it already. Absolutely. So we have a a a a, a super an expert yes. in the in a, a, a leading authority. We think. Uh, I think you have you been a woman your whole life. As far as I know, I'm just checking because nowadays you gotta ask. It's right? true, you do. Nowadays you gotta ask. So I'm just being woke. Yeah, are those original parts or are they after market? <laughs> Nothing is aftermarket here. <laughs> nice. nice. Came uh, off the assembly line like that, huh? All right. Before we get rude, we better introduce yeah. you. Nicole Frolic is a podcaster and a coach, and uh, she does many, many things. And we actually met at a uh, some networking event, and I was, I was basically passing out cars going, hey, I have a podcast and radio show with my buddy, and we talk about healthy masculinity. She goes, I love talking about healthy masculinity. I love how it. Okay, you need to come on the show. Boom. And here she is. Happened just like that. So is that the way it happened? It's Something exactly like that. Or was it, it or was it or did he just tell like his version of it? I think it was just before the whipped cream pie. Oh, see now all right, time out, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> it ain't that kind of show. I don't know what kind of y'all I don't know where y'all about to go with this, but an adult needs to step in right now. I'm probably the oldest one in the, the room. The why, I need why to you step in, in and because I'm the most mature one in the room. Right. <laughs> Right, you might be the oldest. Beow, beow, beow. <laughs> you the most mature. So, Nicole, can I call you Nicole? You can. You can call me Nikki too if you'd like. I can call you Nikki. We got like multiple Nikki yeah. and Nicole. Get confused. Double the pleasure. Double the fun today. For real. Wow. It's like two for one around here, <laughs> fellas. We're bringing you all the Nikki Nicoles that we can bring you around here. So magical. Here's the the million dollar question: Do real women love masculinity? I believe they do. Ooh, boom! You said it. Yep. No, they do. You said it. She said it out loud, live on the air. <laughs> I'm right. speaking She's for all the real women yeah. out there. She's proud of it, too. <laughs> See, that's why we bring you on, because you get to be the voice of all the women. Absolutely. So if you disagree, mm. or if you agree, comment on this thing. We want to know your thoughts as we're having it. We have no idea where this conversation is going to go. We do, There's no like pre-production meeting or nothing like that. We got no questions written out, none of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So we would love your feedback, your input, whether you agree with uh, with anything we say or not. You know, Put a comment in that bad boy. We'll see it and we'll reply or respond either now or later whenever you're watching this bad boy. Yeah. So but a question a- pops into my mind since we did ask you do you like masculinity? Do you like masculine men? What does that mean for you? Yeah. That's such a good question mm-hmm. because I feel like it's so convoluted these days. Mm-hmm. You got to um, use smaller words for our audience. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us went to public school. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I think 
we, you know, like we've had such a huge movement throughout the decades. And there's been obviously over the last, I would say, five to 10 years, this bashing of masculinity as if just the word masculine is going to be toxic on its own, which I can't stand. Literally had this conversation over the weekend with another guy and um, he thought it was quite refreshing that a woman felt that way. And I think I think for me, from what I believe masculinity to be as the spokeswoman (laughs) for all women, apparently, is that one Every woman wants to feel safe. And so if I'm with a man, the first and foremost thing that I want to feel is safe with him. Mm. And so to me, a real man is going to offer a certain level of protection. He's also going to do all of the things that I don't want to do anymore in a sense of I run my own business. I have to do all those things. I kind of have to wear the pants during the day when I'm with a man or my man, it would be so nice for someone to make the plans. It would be so nice to know that someone's got my back and can take care of certain things that I don't have to think about. That allows me to be softer, to be more nurturing, to to really kind of tend to that man's needs in a way that he's probably needing as well. And so I think that masculinity, first and foremost, there's got to be protection, but there's also got to be strong boundaries. I love a man who has strong boundaries. That doesn't mean that they're restrictive. Hmm. It just means that they know what they want. They know what their values are and they have conviction. I think that's missing in a lot of men these days. And I'm not blaming men for that. I'm just saying it's missing. Hmm. So... um, that's kind of how I feel. That's a kind of a, a short rundown. Yeah. Well, and what, a couple of things you said and what kind of triggered for me is like there's not a lot of reciprocation. There's not a lot of ladies nowadays who can allow a man to be masculine. And you know, like you said, I run my own business and I like for him to take charge. We hear from a lot of ladies, well, I, I, I want him to take charge. I want to be in my feminine. I don't know how. It's like, well, you got to give him space yeah. to be in the masculine. And like you said, you know, having boundaries and... and, and being able to oh what you said i think that was going to trigger a lot of ladies was you know being there to support him mm-hmm. and doing things for him mm-hmm. and being of support and we don't hear a lot of that nowadays it's all about what do you got going to do for me lately kind of thing right because quite often you hear the just like you said um i don't know how but we don't allow men to have that same excuse and we would call it an excuse. We don't allow men to say, I want to be masculine, but I don't know how. We say, you are a loser. You mm-hmm. suck because you're not masculine. We don't give that same level of grace, right? And so, No, there's different standards. Uh, right, women, right, absolutely. Women totally get a pass. Men, no pass. And, and, and that's, that's, that's the conundrum. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to public school, but I did graduate. That's See the, all the C words. Um, yeah, boom, we're on it. That's the conundrum that a lot of men find themselves in is that we don't get the grace for the, the lessons we never got taught growing up and the things that we have still yet to learn. However, we are almost required culturally mm. to give grace for everything that the woman can't be or is not allowed to be or doesn't want to be or used to be all those kinds of things. I mean, you know, we're, so, so that double standard, you know, can absolutely exist in, in our culture. Um, and, and and to some degree, you know, that that's one thing that we may need to address in the dynamic of male, female, masculine, feminine dynamic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there needs to be a level of compassion for both sides in understanding that I think we've all straight we've all strayed off the path of what I think. Let's just call it. I believe there's an original blueprint of femininity and masculinity. And of course, it's going to evolve over time. And it doesn't mean that. You know, you must fit fully in a box because I don't believe any of us should be in any kind of box. But there's certain natural inclinations that we all have uh, if you're a woman or if you're a man. Yeah. And I think that there's needs to be a more open mindedness around that concept, because I think when we look at what we face with like third wave feminism, which I believe is actually toxic, um, is really kind of forcing women to go into their masculinity, which then forces men to go into their femininity. And it and I've just seen I've just seen a destruction of relationships um, as a result of it. And I think, you know, from my perspective, 
I like it actually feels really good to be in my nurturing um, energy and to be more tender and to be more vulnerable. Uh, And if I feel safe enough to do that, then that means I can be softer for the man and allow him to actually open up and express himself without him feeling like he's going to be judged or he's going to be another C word criticized, Mm. which all men hate, I think. (laughs) So who so whose responsibility is it is the question of who goes first? Oh, well, I mean does does she provide the femininity so that he can be masculine or does he provide the masculinity so that she can be feminine? I think it's a chicken it's a chicken and the egg kind of concept. Mm-hmm. You know, I think both people need to be on the same page. And both parties need to be participating in a way of understanding, okay, this isn't going to work if you start and then I follow. I think we Both parties need to be initiating on some level. Mm -hmm. And if you notice that maybe one party is lagging, then it can be your choice to choose to experience it differently by offering an opening, by offering an olive branch Mm -hmm. in some way. And if, you know, if you're a woman or you're a man, if the person you're trying to offer this isn't picking it, you know, isn't picking it up and, you know, what you're putting down, well, then then you have to have a conversation about it and express what your needs are. Yeah, there's a lot of disconnect and a lot of misinformation and a lot of um, I'm not going to use the word misandry, but I already did. So anyway, there's a lot there's a lot of this double standard when mm-hmm. it comes to okay, guys got to have it all figured out. Mm-hmm. We've got to have all of the patience in the world for all the ladies. And one of the things you said earlier was about having standards. And you may not like the standards, but if he doesn't have standards, he's not a real masculine man. Yeah. And uh, what we see nowadays is. Men are not allowed, or at least what we're being told is men are not allowed to have standards. We're supposed to take on any woman, whether she fits our preference or not, whether what her weight is or her height or her hair color or her whatever, you know, everybody has preferences. And, you know, naturally, biologically, we have preferences for a reason so that there's somebody for everybody. Because if we all like the same thing, we're going to run out of that thing and I'll be, you know, starving in the bread line, basically. But men nowadays cannot even express their preferences because then they're toxic masculine or, you know, know. they're, they're such part a of the patriarchy. Because we all have preferences. And I think it's incumbent upon us as men to have preferences mm-hmm. and to hold to those preferences and to not, I'm going to say conform, meaning to um, to just accept whatever is given to us mm-hmm. in terms mm-hmm. of if 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 you if you come across or if you, especially if you're in like a single space or whatever if you're meeting if you're dating and you're meeting a woman who presents as overly in this case like we're talking about overly masculine or hard and gruff it's so it should be okay to say you know what you might be for somebody but you're not for me and to move on with that and to make that kind of uh you know make that something that that is is it's okay to not like and um and speaking of not like sometimes we don't like it but we got to take a break we got to take a break we got to take a break we'll be right back mad men of masculinity kldc twelve twenty a.m in the mile high city we'll be right back Boom. We just give a few minutes of silence just so yeah, they just can to see make it on sure. that. Just to, so they can see the... What's that? What's that? What? Nice. Yeah, I, saw that post. I saw that post. I'm like, what, nice. what, what kind of 50-year-old man are you hanging out with? Shut up, fool. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know, do you know that that is such a huge expression of our society Mm, of how much people are looking for outside validation to believe that they're right in their own thought patterns? Mm -hmm. It's the echo chambers. Yeah. Yeah. To fit in. Yeah, I actually was told by my Course in Miracles teacher that I should go see the Barbie movie because it's not what you think it is. Mm. They, 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 there's a lot of subversive kind of like, you know, eye-opening, you know, messages there. I'm like, for real? I 
Oh. Well, I mean, got to go see it for yourself and decide for yourself, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I heard it wasn't so bad either by a guy I don't know. yesterday. I think, yeah, so. I can, uh, I'm going to guess that I can probably wait for it to come on. Yeah, yeah. I know. I can too. Just go guess. <laughs> when, when, it, when it comes on Prime, I'll watch it for free. Yeah, I'll see it on Amazon. Oh, boom. There you go. <laughs> oh, look. We're there all going go. for free next time. I think if I'm going to the movies, it's probably not to see Bobby. No. Probably go see Sound of Freedom again. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but um, yeah. anyhow, that's that's just me. Boom. That's another topic for another day. Boom. It is, matter of fact. All right. That's cool. Hey, we're back. We're back. We are back. We are Mad Men of Masculinity. And we are on KLDC. 1220 a.m. in the Mile High City and on like podcasts everywhere, like Facebook, yeah. YouTube. I know y'all uh, are confused because you're watching us right now live yeah. on YouTube and Facebook, and you're like, why do they keep talking about this 1220 a.m. radio? When and can I know they hear you young that? kids, I know you young kids don't know what a radio is. Yeah. You get in your car and it's all streaming and everything else, but radio is free over the airwaves. That's it's radio right. waves out in the air, it's free. That's right. We're and, up here in the Mile High City. Yo. And you can hear us. Saturdays at 8 a.m., Wednesdays at 6 p.m. on those radio waves here at 1220 a.m. And you can stream us for you kids who don't even know what a radio is and don't know how to use the thing or anything. You can stream us on 1220kldc.com. Mm-hmm. You know who does know what radio Your mama knows who radio Sorry, I just want to throw in a mama joke just because. Why are we going to go dirty? to be rude Why are we like going to go dirt, do dirties, man? Your mama. <laughs> um, your mama got a toe in her back and they call her tobacco. Anyhow. <laughs> um, so we're talking about... <laughs> Hey, I told you we grew up in the hood, right? Um, we're talking about masculinity. We're talking about, you know, the whole idea of women women liking mascul- masculinity, loving masculinity. One of the things you brought up, and full disclosure, I'm going to be totally honest with you, Nicole. Mm. Totally honest, right? Ooh. And be real. I'm going to be like, real with you. I like you. the realness. So me and JBK, we play golf almost every weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And, you know, a lot of times we talk about what's coming up, and a lot of times we have no idea what's coming up. Um, and so, anyhow, in our back and forth talking about this topic, I said, you know, sometimes we speak to men, sometimes we speak for men. And I say we need to make sure that this topic is not something where we're preaching to men. Yeah. Um, where we're not trying to bring in, you know, pretty girl hosts to tell men how jacked up we are and all this other kind of stuff. We need to make sure, you know, that we are we're 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 expressing the heart of manhood and masculinity. The last thing we need is to beat up men more yep. and then talk about like masculinity, right? Well but that's what, why that's why I, I brought her on was yeah. or asked her to come on with us is because she's saying the same thing we're saying is like Absolutely. ladies, if you want to find a masculine man, you have to be a feminine woman. Yeah. And that means doing your due diligence and being able to accept the fact that he has standards and he may ask things of you that you may not be prepared to give because you have not been told your whole life that, hey, guess what? It's a two-way street, and you got to provide things as well. So many young ladies nowadays are like, I'm the table. What do you bring to the table? I'm the table. Get out of here with that mess. <laughs> I want to hear that ever again. Now, one of the words you brought up earlier in the, fir- in the first segment that, man, it's really it, it's, it's captivated my heart. In this topic, you like that captivated my mm-hmm. heart. That was pretty yeah, deep. You make make me dewy eyed over here. Uh, one of the so that I don't know what that word was, but anyhow, um, the word you brought up the word safety or mm-hmm. safe. Yes, a, a, in terms of a woman feeling safe, mm. and I think one thing that we lose track of or lose sight of is that men need and require safety they as do. well. Mm-hmm. And when we feel safe, then we can we can express the fullness of our of our being, of our manhood, of our masculinity and all the expressions that 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 shows itself. And so so uh, it sounds like you kind of agree with that that notion. But what does that mean to you when I when I say that men need safety as well? Oh, I I think it's great. I'm so glad you asked that because you know, I was dating someone last year and I could tell that this person really struggled to communicate, really struggled to find his words. He just wasn't he just wasn't comfortable uh, really sharing, I think, his truth. And just opening up is just was hard for him. Uh, And I realized that instead of me really kind and this is what a woman will tend to do. And I even I I'll, I'll catch myself doing this. I'm totally guilty. But we'll kind of poke and prod with all these questions. And it can I feel like that can make a man uncomfortable. Like, let me know if I'm wrong. But oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. When, and, we, when we're silent, when we don't feel safe to communicate and then all you're doing is badgering us with questions, we're feeling less and less safe. Yes. We're feeling less and less 
wanting to be open about what we're feeling. So what I would do is instead I actually would soften my whole demeanor and I might grab his hand or I would just kind of lean into him and I would not necessarily make all this eye contact because I felt like that would actually make him even more under the gun. And through that, I would just kind of, I would elaborate on what he was saying, like kind of maybe not I don't want to say help him find his words, but just kind of get the process started. And he actually just started naturally opening up more. And he tended to like that. And so that was a really cool experience for me to see the difference of, oh, when I actually soften and I don't poke and prod and I actually create a space that is comfortable for him to open up without feeling like I'm judging him or waiting for him to say the wrong thing or the right thing, then it just, uh, I think it alleviated the pressure. You Jesus, heard it here we, first. We need, we need to capture she said her. Soften. And we need to capture her and study her. Yeah. yeah. Um, you heard it here first, lady. She's, we need she's to your sp- spokeswoman. man. Because you, that, you that, said there's, there's so much magic in that oh in God. terms of softening so that he can... So that he can, he can, I want to say hardening, but that sounds like weird, but we're all here because of a hard man and a soft woman, mm. biologically speaking. Yes. Um, <laughs> right. And so all the things, but so when you soften, then you make space for him to harden mm-hmm. and, in or to become that structure or become that, that thing, as opposed to you getting, you know, rigid and, and pushing, which only forces him into the same thing. And that becomes destructive for both and so man that was that was that was magic yeah no the whole i told you i was bringing the magic oh yeah no the whole fact that you said soften i think that's something that a lot of ladies because to your point of earlier they're so in their masculine they've been so taught to be in their masculine to be boss babes and and to run their companies and do all these things they've forgotten that softening getting into their feminine is how you get a man to be masculine Mm -hmm. and granted we i mean Culturally, we've had a lack of male influence in families for so long. So we've had a lot of single mothers doing the best they can, Mm -hmm. but they don't know how they're not men. They don't know how to raise men. And they have been inadvertently doing the best they can, quote unquote, making men more feminine because they are women and only know how to be women. So they're like, no, no, don't do that. Don't be this. Be like this. Be more emotional. Be more this. And then as as their daughters grow up and the sons grow up, the daughters are going, where are all the masculine men? Mm hmm. Well, they've been taught all their lives to, they, they get this double edge kind of, I don't want to say lessons, but they get this double edge expectations of suck it up, be a man, but also be feminine and soft and, and approachable. And it's like, well, what do you want? Mm. And there's so many confused men out there who don't even feel like men because they haven't gone through a rite of passage and they don't have any women. Well, and because they were taught to yeah. soften as a woman softens and yeah. that's not the way a man softens. No. Like, that's just not how it works. And I think, you know, for all the ladies out there, it still is maybe even a bit still confusing because I I think this is a process that we kind of go through and we learn on our own. One simple thing that I found really works is, again, if you're wanting your man to open up or any and, you know, and it's it's a relationship where this is normal, like this is accepted uh, that, you know, put your physical touch. Men love physical touch. It puts them at ease. And of course, you know, a gentle, just grab their, maybe just put your hand on their leg or put your hand on their arm or maybe just their, like, I don't know, on their shoulder or something that is going to make them feel at ease or make them feel like you're there and you're with them. Yeah, you, you ain't should, said nothing but the truth. Yeah, mm. use your like, mouth less. You ain't hands lied more. <laughs> one bit. You ain't doing nothing but just. I mean, ooh, you just you just spilling the beans right now. You giving the secret sauce. Mm. <laughs> this is like this is this is like some secret sauce kind of stuff. I mean, and to to a degree that can almost be used as manipulation. It is so powerful. Wow. Like it is a power. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying it's a very good thing. Mm-hmm. And it, it's so powerful that that's that's the weakness. We do see in many movies, that's how many women, you know, especially when they're with men of power, that's how they get yeah. what they want. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say that's where I learned it from. Yeah. It's, it's but it's not. true. But yeah, yeah, it is true. It is very, very mm-hmm. true that there is tremendous power in that. And hopefully that power is used for good and not evil. Yeah. Um, but there is so much power in in the feminine's ability to soften a man in all of his strength in all of his structure, not in his weaknesses at all. Yeah, there's always seemed to be the like the carrot that the ladies are chasing is they want the masculine warrior guy that they can soften. Like they want him to be the the hardest guy on the planet, but he's soft for her. 
Mm-hmm. And it's the same sort, you know, same kind of same sort of white knight syndrome where it's like sometimes we have to make allowances. We have, we have to make, you know, uh, I don't know where that word went. But anyway, we have to make different decisions and go, hey, who am I? What do I need? And what what's going to match that? And, so, and what we're seeing a lot nowadays is people just aren't self-aware enough to go, hey, maybe I'm not the 10 that my girlfriends tell me I am. And maybe I should go over here and, and be more open to somebody who doesn't fit this litany of of, of attributes that I think I deserve. Mm-hmm. And what happens is as we get older, as men get older, and, and relatively speaking, as women get older as well, a lot of women, when I say older, you know, whatever, 40s, 50s plus, whatever, men have less patience for the fight, for the mm-hmm. fight at home, right? Yeah. And so all of that, 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 feminine masculinity which to me is toxic femininity um all of that when you bring that home like a guy don't he's out battling all day in the in the on the battlefield of life and work and all that other kind of stuff and competing and all that he don't want to do that when he come Mm -hmm. home he ain't trying to hear all that so if you don't have peace when he walks in the door you're the enemy you're the adversary and 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 like i said I, i notice as i get older specifically and and the men around me as we get older that we have less patience mm. for the battle at home and and we just don't want any part of that and so a lot of us would choose to just be single as opposed to dealing with that and a lot of women who were able to get away with a lot of a lot of that when they were younger find that as they get older Older guys he ain't, he ain't got time for all that, no. man. You, can, you that. can kick that to the curb somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so we, we find that trend, I think, as people get older, as we get older, male uh, male and female, in terms of what that dynamic looks like in the home. Well, yeah, you're less likely to compromise yeah. on mm-hmm. things that you really don't want to compromise on. That was the word I missed. Thank you so much for bringing that That's back. Another C. <laughs> another that's C another word. C. Yeah, a lot of C's <laughs> going on around here. Boom. Yeah, but, but that's, yeah. A, that's a, those compromises are the things that, is reality mm-hmm. and so many of us are living in this fantasy world talking about the barbie movie during the break like we're living in this fantasy world where it's like oh i can have everything it's like you can have it. and that's why we're the next episode we're doing is, is you get who you are yeah and so you have to be willing to be honest with yourself men or women but especially as we get older and just be like we have a lot of ladies that are watch our show most of our most of them are you know 35 to 55 who watch our show and we keep saying it's time to compromise and let go of that list you had in your 20s of, you know, all the sixes and all the stuff and, and go, who am I? Because that's who I'm going to get. All that stuff that the world tells you you need to be outside the home is not going to work in the home. Um, in particular, the older we get in, mm-hmm. in terms of that dynamic with with masculinity and what yeah. that looks like. And that's not wrong. That's not a bad thing because, you know, an old warrior, an older warrior doesn't want to fight. I mean, and that's it doesn't want that battle. And that's why, you know, generals are older men. Admirals are older men. I mean, like, you know, the, the people who are who are, you know, the head of the military don't really want to fight. But it's the younger people that have to do the fighting. And so ideally, you know, ideally, when we have that dynamic in the home, it's one of those things that man, we, we just we, we we'd rather not do all of that. Yep. And so we got to find that balance of, you know, the, the strong masculine and the 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 strong, soft feminine. I agree. And speaking of. What we don't want. What we, <laughs> what don't we do want. want. We do we, want. We got to compromise. Yeah, we we got to take breaks from time to time to give you give yourself time to process. So we will be right back. Mad Men and Masculine on KLDC. Boom. My chair is creaking. I didn't like that. I was like, yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Need some uh, WD forty. For real. My <laughs> chair must be old like you are. Yeah. Hey. Easy. My chair is not squeaky at all. <laughs> it must be that extra weight. I just leaned it to the side. Sure. 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 Dude, somebody pointed that out like in one of the last pictures. You, you, you kind of, you kind of swollen up a little bit, man. Like seriously, you you lost some weight. You gotta be looking a little cut, Lord. Okay, I've been, I've been Somebody to to said that in the picture we posted last. Oh, was yeah. it last week or oh, two weeks ago? That's always nice to hear. Um, that is, yeah, no, my buddy Danny and Brinkley. Um, Shout out to him. He said, "Yeah, you're slimming down." I'm trying to keep up with you, man. Yeah, you even had your shirt tucked in and everything, man. I was like, dude, you know, <laughs> trying to try and work it out, man. See, For real. see, I'm trying to do what I got to do to get these ladies out here, but um, ain't working. You being your best, you man. <laughs> you being the best, you. All right, let's rock and roll with this thing. It's your boys. We back. We back. We are back. We are the Mad Men of Masculinity. Mm-hmm. 
And we are on KLDC 1220 AM in the Mile High City. We're on podcasts everywhere. Everywhere you can find a podcast, you'll find us there. I found us like on my TV at home somewhere yeah. or something like that. I mean, it was it was pretty trippy, man. And uh, it's one of them things, man. We talk about good stuff, man. Yeah. Deep stuff. Stuff that people don't normally talk about. You know, we don't come in here complaining. We don't go all red pill. You know, women are the enemy and all this other kind of stuff. And when, why, you know, woe is me. All that other kind of stuff. We're about... We're about leveling up. We're about men being the tide, and when the tide comes in, all boats rise. Speaking of all boats, we brought in a hot ship in town who who loves masculine men, Mm. and she's here to speak for all you ladies. Mm -hmm. Every single one of y'all. All you ladies. Every single one of y'all. To tell you how to soften... For your man. If you disagree, you need to you need to check. You need Go to ahead. hit her up on social media and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And can they find you like Nicole Frolic yep. on yep. social media and all Instagram, that kind of stuff? Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Boom. Those are my three main. If you got problems with her, you need to hit her up. <laughs> <laughs> but I would suggest more than likely, y'all probably need to say, "Hey, I need your help." Well, don't worry, thing, I won't delete your comments nah. either. We don't do we don't well, do that either. If, if you have an issue, first thing you do is you need to check yourself and go, "Why do I have an issue with this? Yes. Is she speaking truth that I don't want to hear?" Mm-hmm. And then you then maybe take you know a breath and then formulate. A, a educated question. Yeah. Because now, I was having a conversation earlier. I mean, I didn't cut you off, but this is, I, I, I keep forgetting to bring this up. I was having a conversation <laughs> earlier today with, um, with, uh, with a lady, with a female, great, great, sincere woman, great hearted woman. And she was having some challenges, relationally speaking. And, and, and I'm definitely not going to go into any details of any <laughs> of that kind of stuff. But at some point in the conversation, I was suggesting that as the relationship thing, you know, pans out, whether it's going to pan out or not, that it would behoove her to invest in finding some feminine spaces to get in to fill her cup, to fill her feminine cup because she's a doer. She's a giver. Ah. Right. She's I mean, not only with within this relationship, but for kids and grandkids and all that kind of stuff. So she ends up pouring out a lot. And and often you can end up pouring out of an empty vessel. Mm. And so my my advice to her was you know, find a way to pour into that cup, pour into that vessel so that when that cup overflows, you can actually pour into other people out of your saucer, not your cup. Yes. And so I was I was trying to encourage her to find some feminine spaces, some feminine places uh, to refill that that feminine cup. And I was wondering uh, from your perspective, Nicole, uh-huh. um, how might women find um, opportunities to fill their feminine cups so that they can be everything that they need to be or could be for the masculine man that shows up in their life. I love that. But before we get to that, I have yes. to address one thing that you said. Uh-oh. No, it's really good. You did something that was very masculine. What's that? Is that you kept your word by not sharing with the audience the details of like whatever the conversation was. And as, and as obviously, I don't think you would say that on the radio, but that is... That is another key distinction of masculinity for me is keep your word. Mm. Your word is your bond. And I just don't feel like enough men, ladies, I know you're going to agree with me on this one. Men will say things that they mean in the moment, but not necessarily what they can follow through in the Mm. future. Mm. Don't do that, men. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I've I've had that experience where I couldn't tell a woman I loved her or that I was going to be with her forever because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. And she hated my guts for it. Mm. I'm like, I'm trying to be honest with you. I don't. This is what I can give you right now. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. things are good right now. We'll see what happens. But that's not what she wanted to hear. Boom. Hey, it, it, the truth is not always what we want to hear. I would rather someone be upfront and honest with me so I can choose and decide where I want to place myself in that situation, mm. whether it stay within it or maybe start to leave. Now, going back to the feminine spaces and places mm-hmm. and all of that good stuff for me, and it's going to be different for every individual, but creativity is a huge feminine um, energy. So if you've got creative uh, impulses or anything like that, whether it's painting, uh, writing, um, you know, anything that is creative, music, music is a very creative thing. Get involved in anything that is creative. I also would say do anything that's going to nourish your body because so many women will put themselves last. And so, for instance, we were just talking uh, off the air here. I went to a hot springs a couple weeks ago because and I almost didn't go because I was like, oh, it's a two and a half hour drive there. It's a two and a half hour drive back. But then I thought, no, Nicole, like. Just do this for yourself. One, you actually love the drive. And I thought to myself, yeah, I do love the drive. So why wouldn't I do that? And so when I did that, 
I enjoyed the whole day at the hot springs, about a full day pass, and just sat in the sun, soaked in the mineral water, and nourished myself. And that was so incredible because I will say this, women, you are a magnet by polarity. You will attract things to you when you are in your feminine energy. And when I put myself there, I literally had so much business. I had business opportunities approaching me at the at the hot springs, which are followed through. So on top of me taking care of myself, the universe, God, whoever you want to call it, then nourished me with more business for my future. And so doing things that are going to physically take care of you are so important. And this is why women, we are feeling beings by nature. And everything about your body is meant to feel. And so when you take care of your body, you can go more into your feelings. And I think so getting a massage, maybe, you know, getting a foot rub or anything that's going to physically nourish your body. I would say even working out is important. But for me, for instance, I love yoga, but I won't do a power yoga class because I work out so much. I go running. So I want to do deep stretching. Mm. And that to me is like almost getting a massage. So there's a lot of different things that you can do in that way. Um, You know, just doing things that fill your cup, like you said, that you're passionate about things that you may be dancing, shoot, like dancing gets you in your body too. I, if you love to dance, go out and dance, move your body in a really fun way. Cause I will tell you this lady, anything that moves your hips is going to activate your feminine energy. Mm, <laughs> mm. Now, the one thing you, you, uh, you brought up that I, I've seen this a couple times in the last few weeks. And I think it's something we need to address as well. One of the biggest issues, or what I I was watching um, TikTok of, of another female coach who was talking about the biggest mistake ladies make with their men is expecting their men to deal with or understand emotions like like women do. Yeah, and we just don't. Mm-mm. I mean, when for most of us guys, most of our lives we have been taught to distrust emotions. That's why we say I think. We don't say I feel quite a bit. You know, mm. although a lot of us have been taught to, I feel, and this is where I'm coming from. You know. But that's how we get into this muddled up masculine and feminine energy. And you just said it. Mm -hmm. When you are polarizing in your feminine, you will attract the masculine you want. Mm -hmm. So break break that down. I I feel like I need a biscuit to sop up all that gravy (laughs) that you just put out there, Nicole. Like for real. First of all, you made me look like a freaking genius because everything you just said was stuff that I, I literally almost verbatim recommended for her in terms of getting, oh, well, there into, you go. getting into those those feminine spaces and I, I I'm talking like art music all that kind of stuff. I mean, are you coaching you know, a witness? Is that what's going on here? Are you no, behind the scenes I'm, coaching I'm, a witness? I'm, because I'm telling you, dude, I was just like, you know, and, and then I, you know, and she she brought up like, oh, I need to, you know, get into some really good workout. And I said, you know, I was like, eh, I'm thinking more of being overdoing. I was like, you know, sometimes you can get into things that that make you sweat. And if it becomes work, that's not what I'm talking yeah. about. I'm talking about spaces where you can just paddle be boarding, you, mm. all that kind of stuff. I was like, but uh, I mean, I even told her like a bath, you know, stuff. <laughs> and you mentioned hot springs. So, I mean, this kind of stuff is like, you know, this kind of stuff is great. By the way, I mean, I recommend that kind of stuff for men as well. Yeah. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. Dude, and I, will I love say, me taking a bath, man. Even, mm. a, even a glass of red wine, listening to some really nice romantic Girl, music. You better stop. Go you, buy you, yourself you flowers. Girl, you talking about his stop. Friday evening. Girl, you better don't don't you you better take that camera out of my house for real i ain't i'm i'm you know ain't nothing wrong for me ain't nothing wrong with a no. bath and a little you know some some sade and, and a little glass you know a little a little small glass of red wine i get up into that you know i, I never wanted to know that until I that mean, one day i text you I'm like hey what you doing you're like man i'm in the bed dude, with the my wine i was like i don't need to hear i can see a picture if you want jbk i, can, I don't you know, know. No. i can send you a picture if you no, want man i'm good you know i mean if you want to but getting out into nature you know another thing getting out into into what we call mother nature getting out into the elements the breeze and the flow and and the fields of all that kind of stuff i dig all that man that is some Mm -hmm. fantastic stuff but i i I recommend that to guys as well you know we have a you know we have a a, a x and a y chromosome you know i mean so we got both of those sides of those things and i recommend guys get into your feminine space man you know i'm not talking about being feminine but experience that so that you're not looking for that from a woman per se yeah like you have the ability to tap into that and tap into all of those same spaces but uh, but you know do that on a you well, know as as a as a dessert not as the meal 
And it's not that these things are strictly for women or right. strictly for men. It's yeah. like every each of us has a masculine and a feminine energy within us. Yeah. But you want to be more within your feminine if you're a woman and you want to be more within your masculine if you're a man. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you're not going to oscillate between different ones depending on what situation you're in and what day it is. And for some of us, when what time of the month it is, you know, like we all have our own moments. And so it's just understanding what works for you. Yeah. That's one of the things that we have brought up several times is being present and knowing what's necessary in the moment, because especially if you're in relationships, there's never going to be a complete total polarity. There's going to be times where as a guy, I'm going to be wiped out. I'm going to need some, you know, Soft, feminine, you know. Time. You gonna need some what? Just say it, man. You gonna need some what? Bath. I'm gonna need say a bath. It. What? What? Hey, but, this FCC airway. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. Don't <laughs> yeah. But there's gonna be times where the ladies gonna have to take the the lead. She's gonna have to be the masculine in that masculine role. And there's gonna be times where the guys gonna have to take the back seat and mm-hmm. be in the feminine role. But it's being present and being aware. The most powerful people are the people who can slide into whatever is necessary, whatever role, whatever personality they need at that time. But so many people just get stuck in, this is who I am, this is what I got to be. And it's like, well, is that effective? And it's not right, good, right, you know, good, bad, right, or wrong. Is it effective? Yeah. But I, th- I think this topic is important because we, we, and I know for sure I do, but we hear from women everywhere that I have to do this. I got I to gotta work. Mm-hmm. I got to take care of the kids. I got to do all this other kind of stuff. Every day. It's hard for me to be feminine. It's hard for, how do I do that? And so, man, I almost, I wish there was somebody that taught women how to be feminine, how to get into their feminine space. Because I, I hear that so many times from, from women these days. Of there, There's just the lack of femininity in their life because they feel like they don't have the space which I think they lose the skill mm. of getting into that feminine whatever moving your hips I like that yeah well you know it's it's one thing that I've really dived into over the last year because uh, I've been working a little bit with um, plant medicine and stuff like that mm. and I found that the more that I awaken my feminine energy, the more this really incredible energy wants to move through me. It's very much like that snake. It's a very curvy movement. And you tap into a power of creation and manifestation unlike ever before. And so I've actually even I've created a course called actually the womb of activation. And it's not just for women. It is for men. I've had men in there who've had incredible um, uh, experiences because uh, we all have an, everyone has an energetic womb space. Mm. Just as women, you have an energetic uh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Man, male space. Yeah, yeah, yeah male yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. 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 Um, and so, you know, learning how to uh, get back in touch with that energy is so powerful. In fact, I've even worked with women who've had fertility issues, and and a lot of it stems from being out of your feminine mm-hmm. energy. And so teaching them how to get back in there and healing the actual womb space, all of that area, it's so powerful. And I found that once you're in that in that kind of flow, it's like you are a force that is unstoppable. There isn't anything you can't achieve, but not from the achievement that we think mm-hmm. we have to do through a masculine sense, but from that attraction sense. Like mm-hmm. You let it just come to you. We've yeah, we, attracted a break. Oh, uh, we have. We have attracted our last break. Well, let's here. take this we, attractive yeah. break. I'm digging that. We'll we be gonna, right we back. look in the mirror. <laughs> Mad Men of Masculinity, KLDC 1220 AM. We'll be right back. Man, that is. Woo-wee. Yeah, we had Heather Hakes on last week, and she talked about doing. Uh, Didn't she talk about like a the womb, womb space or something like yeah, that? She did talk about like that. Getting, getting like, putting her hands in the womb space and. <laughs> now I don't think she said all that. You you might have gone down. I don't think go back and said, watch it. I don't think she okay, said nothing about no hands in the womb space. That <laughs> might be something she did. Huge. Did she see? She did. See, or maybe See? I was just maybe I detached. Maybe when maybe, I heard maybe you space. should listen to other people occasionally. Then you'll yeah. Say. Maybe maybe I just maybe I went somewhere else when I, <laughs> he heard. Womb maybe and I he had went to off. hurry home. Ah. I had to hurry home so I can connect with womb space. Listening is um, a feminine energy. That is, is yeah. true. <laughs> got a lot of work to do in that area, um, for sure. The womb space. I'm digging that. <laughs> we need to do a topic on womb space. <laughs> Hmm. That'll be our our Dr. Joyce uh, yeah, episode or something. Space. All right. 
And we're back. We're back. Mad we're Men and Masculinity. And guess what, guys? Hey, we, y'all need to have a womb space. You need to go on like YouTube or Facebook and watch mm. us during the breaks here. Because yeah. sometimes we sometimes get way on. off tangent into the breaks. And this is some good stuff that you don't necessarily get on the radio. You need to go on uh, on, on YouTube or Facebook. We're talking about womb space. Womb spaces, yes. You know, because the reality is, and here's my theory, 87% Uh-oh. of what men do is is because of womb space. Yes, yes. For a woman's yeah. womb space. Yeah, we spend nine months trying to get out and the rest and of our lives trying, trying, mm, trying to get back in. Ain't that the truth? 87% yeah. of what men do during a 24-hour day has to do with the women, the woman's womb space. Yeah. And we to, need it. We want it. It's a powerful yeah. thing. Metaphorically. <laughs> and literally. Literally. All well, those kinds of to, things. To echo what Nicole was saying, is like, the reason ladies nowadays are having such trouble finding masculine men is because they're so masculine. Mm. And not only are they in their masculine energy so much, they have forgotten how to get in their feminine energy, get mm. into their womb space, and it's unhealthy for them. Mm. Just yes. like for guys, if we have too much estrogen, if we're too much in our feminine, it's unhealthy for us. We get moobs, you know, we get emotional. We, 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 we get like, I don't want to go out, see the world. Yeah. I don't want to take on the world. It's this scary. Yeah. Right, absolutely. We lose that warrior side yeah. of us, man. We absolutely lose that warrior side. Of us. But man, that we need to do a show about the yeah. womb space. We, we do. So let's. I, let, I let's, really want to explore. Can you break, can you break down, down the, the womb space? Yeah. The womb space. <laughs> Nicole, can you break down how you train women <laughs> to be more feminine space. and get back in their womb the space? The womb space. Hey, you got to stop saying that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just captivated by the womb space. <laughs> I know. Go, go, be captivated. You know what? We, me, we are in the womb space right now. We have created a womb space in the studio. Anyhow, that's creepy. That's why it's so creepy. You know. Uh, I dream a genie. She was in a womb. She space. Was. <laughs> was. She was. And when you think about it, it's like soft. There's pillows in there. <laughs> yes, I know. There was, I was all pink, dude. All pink. <laughs> See, it all comes back. It See, all. See, now comes when you go back home. and watch that episode, you're like, there's some visuals here that there's I didn't catch visuals. when I was younger. In the womb space. Mm. Yeah. I'm digging that. Yeah. But that's important, though. I mean, seriously, like I think you know, as men move into our masculine space, which I believe. Pendulum wise, the happen. law, of, I don't know about the real law, but uh, you know, the way pendulums go back and forth, I think men moving back into our masculine space, I don't know what you call that. Um, but I, I think at the same time, you know, women moving back into their womb space and the, the importance of that. You know, the importance of that womb space. I think we've lost that. We've lost. I mean, there's I could go down some really bad tangents. Let's, let's on not go one. there. Let's let her talk. But we've lost. We've <laughs> lost the importance of women valuing their womb space. That's why you can be and, careful what you tell him. Yeah, he gets really. stuck on a word. I and, do, man. Can you tell? I'm like <laughs> brain man right now. <laughs> like, you're, just, you're gonna you're gonna I be just, sleeping I, and sleep talking, I saying the womb over, space all night. I can't get over the <laughs> you, have womb to, you, have space. To, you have to tell your lady what happened on this episode. Yeah. So she's like, what? Like, what's he saying? You know, she's probably listening. She's probably watching. But uh. Womb space. So, yeah, I, that, that's an important thing. Right? Yeah. How do you get the ladies back in their womb space, Nicole? Well, you know, uh, one of the reasons why I'm so familiar with this this topic is because I was so in my masculine energy for the first 30 years of my life. Mm. She's experienced it, people. She I, knows I was about. such a. T- I, well, I'm still a Type A personality, but I grew up thinking that you know what I learned from my family dynamic was. My mom was a stay-at-home mom, which is is wonderful if that's what you choose. And my dad took care of everything. So he ha- held the purse strings, which mean I saw him holding all the power. And I was like, mm. there's no way I'm ever going to be in that position ever again. And I just, out of spite for seeing that, I mm. became so hardened and would never give up my power, so to speak, but not realizing I actually was giving up my power. And so what happened for me is I actually... Since I was 20, uh, and I'm 46 now, I've been, I had struggled with a lot of different reproductive issues. And I started seeing a natural path for that. And she helped me see a lot of the emotional connection to it. And so since I've been 20, this is over 25 years, I've been on this healing journey of learning how to love myself as a woman, be more in touch with myself as a woman, understand and appreciate the qualities of surrender, of acceptance, of softness, of tenderness, of kindness, and allowance. And those are things that I was so dead set against. And so learning how when we're not able to embrace those energies as a woman, it actually affects our reproductive area. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's other factors that are going to come into play. But Uh, That has allowed me the last 25 years of my journey of learning how to fine tune and get better. And I'm still learning. There's still things I need to work on and learn. But 
um, surrender, allowance, vulnerability. Oh my gosh. You know, I used to be so scared of being vulnerable with people mm-hmm. until I learned the power behind it. And that's when I started a series on my YouTube channel called Real and Raw and Real where I had to share a very vulnerable healing journey with my audience in real time as it was happening. And I'd be crying on there, which is something I would never allow to happen. And it actually built my business like three X'd it because so many people were connecting with me. So many people started to trust me more. I was building connections that I never was able to build before. So it's so important. And I think that learning how to find the power behind those things that we've been taught through, unfortunately, third wave, third wave mm-hmm. feminism are um, a weakness, which they're not. We have to learn how to embrace again. Yeah, you said something that is like the kryptonite of the feminist movement nowadays, surrender. Mm. And it's so funny because, I mean, even in your experience, you looked at your mother as a stay-at-home mom and you even said kind of in that, like, well, if you choose that, like, it's a bad thing. But when you look at the bigger picture, it's like she's in her feminine. She is doing what she wants to do by being. That was her choice. Yeah. She wants to raise the kids. Mm -hmm. She wants to be. And in in a lot of ways, she was fulfilling a more natural feminine role. But part of that was surrendering to the fact that I want to let him go do making the money and provide, protect and provide, preside over this so that she can do what she's most naturally gifted at and, and wants to do. But there's been such a screwing up of that nowadays and especially with the feminist movement and everything else and it's all about you got to do do and be in your masculine and you know surrendering is something like taking you know losing your power but when and i think you even said it when you actually learn to surrender and be feminine you gain your power back yeah i think we we've not even i think i truly believe we've uh we've we've lost the ability to see that femininity is a power in itself. Mm -hmm. And I think the modern feminist movement has ironically translated into masculinity. They co-opted masculinity. (laughs) And it's like, well, wait a minute. If it's feminism, why does it look masculine? Mm -hmm. And and what's wrong with feminism and and softness and surrender and the idea, those kind of ideas, ideas like like submission, mutual submission is the most powerful type of intimacy I think there is. Oh, I agree. But why do why does all of that become something that is that is weak and that is that is like something that we want to move away from and we have to move towards masculinity. Mm -hmm. To me, that's toxic femininity. And there's so much power in true femininity that it has the ability to level up masculinity. Yeah. I mean, it has, you know, you show me a story with a strong uh, a movie with a strong male figure, a strong male hero where there wasn't a woman as part of that story. Mm-hmm. Show me a single, you name it, Rocky, Braveheart, I don't know, you name it, where there's a strong male central lead character where there's not a woman that's a central part of his thing. Because a woman in her femininity has the ability to inspire masculinity even to the point of sacrifice mm-hmm. self-sacrifice yeah. Yeah, you and, don't think, and we've, we've lost that that, yeah. that that sight of that yeah you don't think that femininity is powerful have you ever seen a full grown man a warrior not sit down at the tea table with a two with a three four year old girl who's like let's have tea that is power like she has got him wrapped around her finger She is completely in control of that big, burly man. She is completely in her feminine power, and she's just soft and cute and cuddly, and all he wants to do is protect her and provide for her and make her life as easy and and as safe as possible. There's a lot of men that have found themselves with... uh Makeup, and, on makeup, and, makeup and, yeah. and nail polish on oh, yeah. at the hands of a little girl, yep. um, at the hands no of that. a daughter. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is so powerful, but we've absolutely lost that that insight. And so, when, and and to bring this somewhat full circle, when we talk about you know when we talk about um, real women loving femininity, or I'm sorry, loving masculinity, I think you know when you are in your feminine. You're almost compelled to gravitate, to attract, and to love masculinity because it is the opposite side of that battery. It's the uh, it's the other hole in the plug outlet that makes for a full cycle. It makes for a full circle where the power can flow back and forward. Yeah. How will I was I was about to say how will they get a hold of you? They know how to get a hold of you. Yeah. What would you give people as we're kind of bringing this plane in for landing? What would be like your tips and tricks, or what are the things that you think 
if you had like one last thing to say to the world, like what do you want to impart to the folks listening right now? Stop calling it toxic femininity and toxic masculinity because mm. it just sounds like gross. I call it wounded femininity and mm. wounded masculinity because the ultimate truth is it all stems from trauma, pain, wounds from our past. And so when we understand that, we kind of humanize it a little bit. We don't think of it's just some toxin, you know, that's like a, I don't know, that it's poisonous, but it's actually a wound that we need to heal. And it stems from somewhere in our past that we need to maybe look at. Nice. So okay. now how can people get a hold of you? <laughs> uh, you uh, Nicole com is my website. Um, you can email me Nicole at Nicole com or my all my handles on social media, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok are Nicole Frolic. I love that your last name is Frolic because it just makes me feel like... It means happy. Yeah. Yeah, but I told you, we don't frolic in a ghetto. You frolic so... No, you got I said... To, if you, I, I, I'm I told talking you, about where I'm from. You, we don't frolic. You don't frolic well. We don't frolic. <laughs> Ain't no frolic <laughs> right in the hood. Ain't no frolic in the hood where I'm from. You can't frolic while you worried about getting shot. You've been frolicking <laughs> in that space. Like I said, you're just not I'm doing from. it right. Where I'm from, my family, you know, even my family reunions, we don't frolic. We might do electric slide, but we That's don't frolic. If, le- if your name was Nicole Electric Slide, then it'd be different. But we, we might do that. Cha-cha slide. We might do something with a slide in it. If you were Nicole Slide, it'd be something we do in the hood, but we don't frolic. That, but that's, it's a, that's hood frolicking, man. That's hood. You're right. That's hood, that's hood right frolicking. Right that's what that I is. dig that, man. That's I dig the, that. That is phenomenal, man. Yeah, I mean, this was this was, man. This was so dope. Like, do you promise to come back one day? Uh, if you will have like, me, Pinky oh, promise. Yes. Uh, I got to bring the womb space part too. Yes, yeah. Girl, don't yeah. play with my emotions <laughs> like that. Don't you play with my emotions like that? I'm sensitive. Uh, I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a man, but I'm sensitive. Wait till that, I tell you off the air what I've got in store. Oh. Well, and that and on that note, on that note, uh, we gotta go. Man, man. We be right back. Out. We we gotta go. We gotta hang out. But uh, no, no, that's that's good stuff. I'm loving that, man. I'm I'm digging that. That was this was fantastic. I really appreciate that, and I think men and women are better as a result yep. of this conversation. All right, say bye to the people. Bye, everyone. And with that, Mad, Mad Men, men out. out.